Hello everyone, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm sharing cards that are inspired by interior design trends or interior design decor. As you know, I am moving soon and uh, I'm moving into an, a new apartment that I purchased a while back and I have been renovating it slowly. And as I was renovating the apartment, I was kind of looking at all of these different interior design trends and ideas and all of that. And a lot of that inspires me in my card making as well, especially the dark backgrounds. I see dark backgrounds in interior design trends and home decor trends, and I want to feature those on my cards. But today's video is not about that. Today's video is inspired a little bit by all the different tiles that I have been seeing in interior design, like bathroom tiles, especially the tile, the type of tiles that you would see on a statement wall. So today I am going to use the Spellbinders Glimmering Flowers collection, and I'm going to pair that collection with some geometric design embossing folders to create the look of tile. Here is one card that I did last night. I started to play with this collection, with this release, and I foiled the beautiful buttercups. There are two glimmer plates in this collection. There is a peony, you can see it here, and then the buttercups. So I foiled the buttercups in matte gold foil. I used the coordinating stencil, and then I thought about ways I can add texture to my foiling. This is not a new technique. This has been done uh, in the past and you can see many techniques where there's a, a stamp sentiment and a colored sentiment combined with an embossed, an embossed background to add texture. So this is what we're doing today. Before I jump into this technique, let me briefly show you this collection because I think it is very beautiful, very inspiring, very feminine, and just like, you know, perfect for some beautiful floral cards. So the two main products in this collection are the Glimmering Buttercups and the Glimmering Peonies Glimmer Plates. So these are quite large and they are designed to go on the front of an A2 card. I have foiled some backgrounds already as I was testing and picking out different foil colors. So the backgrounds that I have here, these are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So they will go on the front of an A2 card. And here, this one is foiled using the matte black foil or the opaque black foil. This one is foiled using gold, the regular gold. Here, I'm not sure what color this is, but the code is GLF027. I think this is the prism foil. I'm not sure, but I will link this in the video description below. And then of course, my favorite, matte gold. I did use matte gold for both of these cards, but then I kind of forced myself to step out of my matte gold comfort zone and try other foil colors because I do have a bunch of other foil colors in my stash. So these are the two main products in this collection, and these are available separately or they are available with uh, coordinating stencils. So there are five layering stencils for each of these that allow you to add color to your foiled images. Here is an example where I used the peony plate and then the peony stencils, and then I just ink blended the images. I also used a marker to color the background because that's what I like to do, but that's, uh, you know, a different story. By the way, the marker that I used, that was the RV06 by Olo. And the reason I used my oil marker to add color to the background is my oil markers are very juicy, especially my pink markers, and they bleed on me often. I Right now, I find it very hard to use them to color my images because I often have a blob of ink, you know, like seeping from my marker and dropping onto my paper and ruining my image. So I figured, you know, I already have all of that ink. I might as well put it to good use. So I used it here on this background to color the background, uh, you know, and make it a little bit more interesting. But what I was trying to say is you can get either the plates alone, or if you enjoy using plates with the coordinating stencils, you can get the plate and the stencil bundle. Another product in this collection is a set of sentiments, and these are glimmer sentiments. These are called called curved everyday sentiments. And then you have a set of dies to cut all of these sentiments at once so you don't have to align and measure anything. And they're just quite easy to use. So here I have most of them. So they're sending prayers, 
This one I already ink blended with blue ink, have a sweet day, best day ever, many things, and so on. So these are like this, like the name says, everyday sentiments. I am not going to use the sentiments for my cards because I wanted to do something else. I really like when there is a different type of like a label on my card. And in fact, I have this as a placeholder or as a, like as a inspiration source. This is a Christmas sentiment, of course, and it is from an older collection by Spellbinders, the mailbox or a parcel and post uh, collection. And, you know, I put it, when I did my background, I added this sentiment a label on top and I was like, you know what? I really like this, you know, this shape versus a skinny strip sentiment. I'm a huge fan of skinny strip sentiments, but I also often like to have a more substantial sentiment on my card. So for these cards, I went ahead and I used the sentiment, the birthday sentiment from the Mirror Arches uh, collection from Spellbinders. And I just shared a video with that collection recently. So the sentiment comes from this Mirrored Arch Blooms set. And then I use the label die from the Mirrored Arch Labels die set. It was the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth uh, smallest label die. Now let's talk color. I was very much inspired by monochromatic look. I first did this card where I ink blended the flowers and the leaves using different colors to have a more traditional look. And then of course I added color to the background. But later I thought about using monochromatic colors to cr create a monochromatic card. So here I foiled the background on white cardstock. I used three shades of blue ink. I have Marine, Cadet, and Royal. These are the Simon Says Stam positively saturated inks. You can use whatever inks you have. I just happen to have inks by Simon. I happen to love their colors. I like that they come in groupings of three. So that's what I like to use, but you can use whatever inks you like with these products and these stencils. So I then use these three colors of ink to ink blend my image. And I also use the lightest ink color, Marine, to add a little bit of ink blending around the edges and darken my uh, panel. I did the ink blending, the background ink blending once the embossing was done. So I'm going to show you real quick because I already have my four panels foiled. So I want to make a couple of cards. All of these are going to be birthday cards because I really like this birthday sentiment and my sentiment labels, the foil labels match, the foiling will match. I should say, because they don't match yet. So I'll have the black sentiment with the black background, the gold with the gold, and then the aura with the aura. And then I just need one more for this one. So I'm just going to pick some colors of ink and walk you through the process step by step. Okay, let's go ahead and get some ink blending done. Here I have my waffle flower grip mat and I've placed my foil panel on top. I'm going to grab my stencils and start blending. It doesn't matter which layer you use to begin your blending. The stencils are numbered. I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a number etched in the corner. So this is a layer number three, for example. I actually think that I want to start with layer number one. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I don't usually follow the order. Uh, and I want to ink blend this particular layer using my darkest ink color. Okay, so I've positioned stencil on the paper and on my mat, and the mat is going to hold the stencil in place, so I don't need to use any tape or anything like that to hold it down. Although you can, if you don't have the grip mat, you can definitely go old school and blend ink blend the way you used to or the way we used to blend um, back in the day. So for this panel, I'm using the following color combination. So I have Galaxy, Twilight, and Morning, and these are the Simon Says Stamp positively saturated inks. It does not matter what inks you use. I happen to have a lot of the Simon Says Stamp ink colors in my stash, and I like to use them for stamping. I use them a lot. so. I am quite familiar with these colors and that's why I often reach for these colors when I do ink blending, just because I'm comfortable using these particular inks in these colors. If you enjoy using other ink inks or ink brands or ink colors, go ahead and use 
whatever you're comfortable with. We are just creating some beautiful monochromatic backgrounds for our cards. So here, even though the stencil has five layers, I am only using three colors of ink just because I want to do a monochromatic ink blend, uh, a monochromatic look. So for my layer number one, I'm using the darkest color and I'm coming in very heavy handed. I'm a heavy inker, I'm a heavy uh, hand blender. I like to have a lot of color. Um, I like to build the color on my paper. So you, you see me often going back to the ink pad, loading my brush with more ink and adding more ink to the paper. I think this looks good. So I'm just going to remove this stencil. Ooh, that is just stunning. Okay. Let's grab the next layer. We're going to use layer number two. Okay, layer number two it is. And again, you just want to position the layer on your stencil. This is not a layering stencil. This is just a building stencil. So once it is aligned, I'm going to press it down to make sure it grabs onto my grip mat and then switch onto my next ink color, which is twilight or the medium blue for this color combination. I also just did another panel with the blue-green color combination. Um, I was trying to film that, but my microphone, the battery in my microphone died and it did not record any audio. I am once again using a very heavy hand to add the color onto my paper. And you know, you can go as heavy hand or as light as you prefer. This is simply the look that I enjoy. Uh, also, you can use these plates without the stencils. If you enjoy, if you enjoy doing coloring, if you enjoy coloring you, using your alcohol markers, your watercolor markers, or pencils, or whatever your preferred coloring medium is, use that to you know to color. But I know a lot of people are not comfortable with coloring. So we now have these fantastic stencils that allow us to add ink blending in place of coloring and the ink blending looks just as good as coloring. If you want, you can do a solid layer of color. I really like when I have my color fade from the darker at the base of the petals into almost white at the tops, at the tips of the petals. So now we have layer number three and we're just repeating the same steps. And for this layer, I'm going to use my lightest color, which is morning. Now we still have leaves to ink blend and the stems for our flowers. And for these, I will come back to the other two colors. I will use the darker, uh, the darker blues that I have here, just so that I have more blue on my background. I like things um, dark and vivid and vibrant. So I always reach for the darker ink colors. I know many of you enjoy the softer colors, the softer looks. So, you know, do whatever you enjoy best. Also, you don't have to use blues. Try and use other colors for some of these ink blended panels. In fact, I tr want to try and use coral for my next panel. I was looking at some wall color examples, wall paint examples today, and I saw some really pretty coral. And I think that would look really nice on a card. So here's a look at our background so far. I love the way this looks. And uh, we just need to add the ink blended stems and also ink blend the leaves. So first let's do this color or this layer using that darkest blue galaxy. I am using the Spellbinders blending brushes. These are the medium size brushes. Um, the reason I'm not using different size brushes here, although I could because I do have different size openings, uh, I'm just trying to make it easy for myself. You know, I don't need to switch between a bunch of different brush sizes. I just want to do simple ink blending and have fun with these stencils. So this is the medium size brush. Let me grab the small size brush. So these would be the smaller size brushes. They come in a pack of three and these would actually work really well on these 
tiny stems. And then this is the new large size brush from Spellbinders. I only have two of those, more is on the way. So that's why I'm not using the larger brushes, but they are fantastic, especially if you want to ink blend a bigger area, you know, maybe like a background or something like that. Okay, this layer is done. So let's remove the stencil. Take a look. Isn't that pretty? I just love this color combination. Okay, and we have one last layer to do. And for this layer, I'm going to use my medium blue. And again, doing the same thing, adding more color at the base of the petals and then fitting this into white. Although I am getting a solid layer in some sections. Are you ready for the final reveal? Let's take a look. Ta-da! So, so beautiful. Isn't that stunning? I think this is just absolutely gorgeous. And that was so easy to make. It took me less than five minutes to create this beautiful background. If I were to recreate this using coloring mediums like markers or pencils, it would have taken me a lot longer. Here's a panel I ink blended using coral inks. This was done on matte gold foil panel. So I used peachy, grapefruit, and mandarin from Simon Says Stamp. Love this. It's very different, very modern. So the next step is to add texture to our panel using an embossing folder. Here I have a 2D embossing folder. I don't think I would recommend using a 3D embossing folder because 3D embossing folder will just add, in my opinion, too much texture. Plus we have foiling here. So the 2D embossing, the 3D embossing folder might actually uh, tear some of that foiling. So I'm going to stick with a 2D embossing folder. If this panel does not work out, I might use and test the 3D folder here. So what we want to do is just uh, pick a folder with a geometric design. So this folder kind of reminds me of tile. It has a nice geometric design. I have, uh, you know, um, circles inside a square and it sort of speaks to me and it looks like tile to me. So I'm going to place my panel inside the folder, make sure that I align it. I will trim this panel down slightly, but I'm not trimming it just yet. So right now I just want to make sure that it is nice and aligned. And then I'm going to bring my Platinum 6 die cutting and embossing machine and then just run this through my machine to emboss the panel. The sandwich for embossing with the 2D embossing folder is very simple. And if you ever forget what the sandwich is, you can always find it on your platform. So you need a platform base, a platform top, your embossing folder with a paper inside and a top or not a top, a one cutting plate on top and just send that through. You don't need to mess your paper. The 2D embossing folders do not give quite as deep of an impression. So I find that I don't need to mess my paper to have a good result. And let's take a look. And I love this. It looks very beautiful. Now here, there is a difference between these two panels. So here, the front of the folder is um, on the front of my panel. Here, the back of the folder or the reverse side is on the front of my panel. So pick, pick which side you like best and experiment with that too, because that will also give you different results. I'm going to use my coral panel inside this folder also, but I'm going to use the reverse side of the folder just because I like that side a little bit better and emboss that as well. And then I have one more panel that I ink blended using the blue green colors uh, of ink. Let's take a look at this. Oh, that is just stunning. I love this result. Okay. And here is our last panel. I think this one might be my favorite. I just love these beautiful colors. So again, going to use the reverse side of the folder just because I like this more than the front. 
it doesn't always work like this with every folder design. You know, some folders, most folders, you have the front, uh, like the embossed and the debossed side. I mean, you, you have the embossed and the debossed side with all folders, but with a lot of folders, both sides look great, but then with some folders, only the front side looks good. So if you're using a different folder, just, you know, experiment and see which side you like best. And here is a look. So technically we have our tile look created and we can keep it as is, but I also like to add some additional ink blending around the edges just to help tie this all together. Here you can see that I've added ink blending. So my background paper uh, or my background color is not white. It has a little bit of blue in. What I do is I just use the lightest color that I used for blending the stencil. I use that to add a very light hand blending to the background of my panel. So let's maybe start with this panel. Here I used these colors, so I use gra uh, mandarin, grapefruit, and peachy, and peachy is the lightest color. I'm just going to see if I can find a larger blending brush. So this is a good size blending brush. And I'm just going to load my brush and ink blend just a little bit so that I can add, you know, just a hint of color to my panel. I might keep the center white it doesn't really matter if the center is um, blended with color or not. I will be adding a sentiment over the center. So that doesn't matter. You can blend the center as well if you want, but I'm just going to add a little bit of color around the edges just so that I have um, color added to my tile. And this is such an easy and such a fun technique because you can do this using so many different colors. You do need just three shades of one color to achieve this look, a light, a medium, and a dark, but then the sky is the limit as to all the different options. Of course, my favorite is always blue or like the blue-green colors, and then this is like an unexpected favorite for me but you know, use your favorite color. I am going to trim this down. Uh, I'm going to take a quarter inch off from each side, just because I want to have a lot of white space on the finished card. You don't have to cut as much off. You can leave uh, more on your paper or you know, you can trim uh, trim more off also. And also I want to add a little bit more of the ink blending to the background. I feel like I want to darken those edges just a tiny bit and maybe bring the color in toward the center just a little bit. So there, I love the way this panel looks. I think this is nice and ready to be put on a card. So here's a look at the panels that I ink blended. I love all of them. I think this one's my favorite. This is my second favorite. And then this one is my third favorite. You can definitely see the difference, especially on this panel where I use the other side of the folder for the front of my panel. I do like these two, but you know, I wanted to show you all the different options. So I'm just going to add these onto an A2 side folding card basis and add my sentiment on top and call these cards done. Here is a look at the cards I have for you created with the Glimmering Flowers collection by Spellbinders. I hope you give this idea a try and next time you do some stenciling, use an embossing folder over that stencil design to add some texture. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. Love you guys and I'll see you next time.